dear students this is dr s m indumathi assistant professor from the department of biotechnology school of bio and chemical engineering satibama institute of science and technology today i am here for a presentation about the topic diphtheria toxin and disease uh, firstly we'll look into the morphology and cultural characteristics of cornibacterium diphtheriae diphtheria is basically caused by uh, a gram positive bacilli called cornibacterium diphtheriae it is non motile non capsulated and non sporing uh, this particular bacilli has uh, some special types of granules called volatile granules or uh, ernst babes granules these are made up of polymetaphosphate which on uh, staining with low flux methylene blue stain uh, takes up a bluish purple color Uh, and this particular type of staining is called metachromatic granule staining and these granules are present on the polar ends of the bacilli that is the opposite ends of the bacilli so they are also called as polar bodies the organisms are generally arranged in pairs palisades or groups so they resemble the english letters v or l and this type of arrangement is called as chinese letter arrangement or cuneiform arrangement this bacilli is also called as klebs low efflus bacilli because uh, it has been credited to its discoverers and the organisms are basically pleomorphic which means they could often change its shape uh, coming to the media employed growth is very scanty on ordinary media so uh, it should be uh, enriched with blood serum or egg and the special medias employed would be uh, low efflus serum slope as well as telluride blood agar generally modifications of telluride blood agar especially this hoyles or macleoids media are used on low efflus serum slope uh, growth starts uh, very early in just 8 hours and the culture i mean under the colonies would be smaller and white in color and on continuous incubation the colonies become larger with an yellow tint in case of this telluride blood agar Telluride is a special uh, component which inhibits selectively inhibits other organisms and supports the growth of Cornibacterium diphtheriae and this Cornibacterium diphtheriae uh, reduces this telluride to metallic tellurium this uh, incorporates a thick black to grayish color in the colonies uh, coming to the biochemical reactions uh, Cornibacterium diphtheriae is indole negative Uh, mr nitrate reduction and catalase positive urease citrate and oxidase negative and you can see uh, an image of cornibacterium diphtheriae showing chinese letter arrangement coming to the toxin macleod has classified this cornibacterium diphtheriae basically into three groups the gravis intermedius as well as mitis based on the clinical severity of the disease that it produces generally gravis strains produces the most uh, intense form of diseases intermedius produces uh, a kind of medium form of diseases uh, while the mitis strains form the mildest form of the disease almost all the strains of cornibacterium diphtheriae produces a powerful exotoxin and 90 to 99% of gravis and intermediate strains produces toxins uh, and uh, mite strains just 80 to 85% produces toxins the quantity may vary among the different strains while the quality of the toxin is relatively similar among all the strains the most important strain that has been continuously used for a longer time to produce the toxin is called park williamson 8 strain coming to the toxin the toxin is basically a protein which has been crystallized the molecular weight of the toxin is 62000 daltons it is composed of two fragments a and b a is uh, an active fragment b is a binding fragment and this a fragment is of molecular weight 24000 daltons and b fragment is of molecular weight 38000 daltons on release from the bacilli on release i mean the, when the toxin is released from the bacillus the toxin is actually inactive because the active site on the fragment a is masked and this will be released only when the protease is present either in the medium or in the tissues uh, activate them after activation the toxin does its actual job while the binding fragment b uh, is just helpful in binding the toxin to the host cell receptors so anti toxin to the fragment b would help prevent the toxin from binding to the host cell receptors the toxin is uh, a rich antigen and it could be neutralized with antitoxins it could be toxoided on combination on combining it with formaldehyde for prolonged storage for about 3 to 4 weeks 
The toxigenicity of Carnibacterium diphtheria is based on the presence of its Carnifages or Tox plus phages. Phages are basically viruses which infect bacteria. So these type of viruses present in this Carnibacterium diphtheria are the genetic determinants of the presence of toxins. Even the non-toxigenic strains of Carnibacterium could be rendered toxigenic uh, by infecting them with other beta phages or Tox plus phages. Until the bacilli is cured of the phages using phage antiserum, the, uh, the bacilli will be toxic. Another important uh, feature that is required for toxin production is iron requirement. So, 0.1 mg of iron would enhance the production of toxin while 0.5 mg of iron would inhibit the production of toxin. The actual mode of action of the toxin especially the fragment A would be inhibition of protein synthesis. Especially this fragment A inhibits the polypeptide chain elongation by inactivating the elongation factor 2 EF2 in the presence of NAD that is uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So, coming to the disease diphtheria and its treatment. The incubation period of diphtheria is around 3 to 4 days but uh, roughly on an average it is just one day. The sites of infection includes various uh, regions like fascial, the facial muscles, conjunctival, nasal, otitic, uh, laryngeal and the vulval, vaginal as well as cutaneous and genital. Based on the clinical severity of diphtheria, Diphtheria is classified into three types, the malignant, uh, septic as well as hemorrhagic. Fascial diphtheria is the most commonest type of diphtheria which starts with mild catarrhal inflammation that, uh, uh, that becomes widespread later on. Catarrhal inflammation means the lining of the mucous membrane uh, becoming inflamed or infected. So, coming to the malignant form of uh, diphtheria, it uh, starts with uh, a marked adenitis, uh, toxemia starts, that is circulation of toxin in the blood starts along with marked adenitis, uh, the lymph nodes getting infected, uh, so that is called bull neck and death will be uh, due to circulatory failure, even if the person recover, the person will be suffering from paralytic complications. Then we have uh, septic diphtheria which uh, comprises uh, cellulitis, ulcerations as well as gangrene in the pseudomembrane formation. I would say what is pseudomembrane later. And then we have hemorrhagic diphtheria which includes hemorrhages in the conjunctiva, hemorrhages of the pseudomembrane uh, as well as epistaxis and purpura. Purpura are uh, purplish uh, rashes or purplish spots because of the leakage of blood vessels and epistaxis is the bleeding of the nose. So, the complications of diphtheria are asphyxia, mechanical obstruction of the respiratory passage due to the presence of pseudomembrane and then we have acute circulatory failure which could be either cardiac or peripheral. Then we have post diphtheritic paralysis which will follow in just 3 to 4 weeks of the disease and finally we have sepsis which has uh, pneumonia as well as otitis media that is ear infection. And what is pseudomembrane? Pseudomembrane is a special feature of this Carnibacterium diphtheria because uh, uh, this particular disease is a toxemia. The organisms when they enter the host, they are just confined to the site of entry and they start to produce the toxin and the toxin actually does the job. The toxin has the pathogenesis part and so this toxin uh, once released, they start to produce local necrosis in the uh, adjacent tissues and it starts to produce some fibrinous exudate. This exudate is rich in uh, WBC cells, RBC cells, uh, the bacteria itself as well as the epithelial cells and uh, this will form a kind of membrane and that is called pseudomembrane which is a kind of uh, light uh, greyish to yellow color. And this is a special feature of uh, diphtheria disease and the mechanical obstruction, the mechanical uh, ailment of the disease is because of the formation of this pseudomembrane. Diphtheria is basically a human infection, it does not infect animals in general but uh, animals could also be experimentally infected. If guinea pigs are infected with uh, diphtheria toxin, it just dies in 1 to 4 days maximum. They produce the following uh, uh, symptoms like hemorrhagic edema and necrosis followed by uh, draining lymph nodes, swollen draining lymph nodes and then uh, cloudy peritoneal as well as pleural exudates following uh, congested abdominal viscera as well as enlarged hemorrhagic adrenal glands followed by pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion means uh, a lot of fluid getting accumulated in the pericardium of the heart. So, regarding the treatment of diphtheria, more than antibiotics, immunization would be preferred. So, immunization is of two types, active as well as passive. 
So in case of active immunization, we have the formal toxoids as well as the adsorbed toxoid. Formal toxoids are uh, when the toxins are allowed to react with the uh, formaldehyde, 0.2 to 0.4% of formaldehyde for 3 to 4 weeks, that would become a toxoid. Uh, and adsorbed toxoid is uh, when the purified form of toxin is allowed to get adsorbed to insoluble aluminium compounds. Uh, adsorbed toxoid is more immunogenic than uh, formal toxoid. Generally, deep, uh, diphtheria is given, uh, immunization for diphtheria is given as uh, trivalent preparations in infants like uh, DPT, diphtheria pertussis tetanus toxin. It is also given as a quadruple vaccine along with poliomyelitis. So then uh, in case of passive immunization, we have ADS, anti-diphtheritic serum. 500 to 1000 units of anti-diphtheritic serum could be given for passive immunization and that is generally for uh, an emergency purpose that would not serve for herd immunity. Rather, if there is any emergency case of diphtheria, just to give uh, an immediate protection, this ADS is given. This anti-diphtheritic serum is obtained from equine horses. So hypersensitivity reactions have to be monitored before injecting them. And then we have combined immunization which means uh, in one arm adsorbed toxoid will be given and in the another arm uh, this uh, ADS would be given that is called combined immunization. In case of antibiotics penicillins and erythromycins would be the drug of choice. And the reference for this presentation uh, is uh, textbook of microbiology by Anantanarayanan and Panikkar. We have reached the end of the slides. Thank you students for patiently watching this presentation.